welcome to a live stream. No, we're, we are going to have some fun, guys. Okay, so I'm a little nervous just because I don't do these very often. So you'll have to bear with me. Chat's up. I've got my stuff over here. So if I'm looking over here, that's why. And um, we're going to be recording some footage. I'm going to be going through some gameplay footage. And uh, I don't have my glasses on, so it might be hard for me to read the chat. But welcome, everybody. Looks like we got about 30 people on uh, right now. And so this is going to be interesting. So anyways, without further ado, we will... Uh, I guess the, the, the process will be, I will be recording when I'm recording. I won't obviously interact with you guys and then I'll take a break as I'm setting up for the next one and you can ask questions. We can talk all that kind of stuff. So, um, I should probably get a moderator for the chat to help pop up the most popular questions or whatever. Not that there's going to be popular questions. Okay. So anyways, let's, uh, get rolling here on some content. So here we go. Less chess, how to play. The object of the game is to be the first player to have three pieces simultaneously attacking their opponent's king. Man, I'm nervous. Guys, you just, you give me the giggles. The giggles, what am I talking about? Lay out the board. It's okay, it'll take a few and we'll get you, we'll just gotta get comfortable here. Lay out the board. Each player takes a set of matching colored pieces and deck. Pl uh, okay. Lay out the board. Each player takes a set of matching colored pieces and deck and places their king on its start square. Each player shuffles their deck and places it face down next to the board. The player with the white pieces goes first, then turns alternate. On your turn, discard the top card of your deck, then either add that piece to the board by placing it on an empty square that is orthogonally adjacent to any of your pieces already in play, or you may move a piece that is already on the board as indicated by the card. Pieces move the same as in regular chess, except for these changes. For a refresher of those rules, check out this video. The king may not move, capture, or be captured. Pawns are not allowed their initial double step move option. Therefore, on passant is not allowed. Pawns promote when reaching the other side of the board. Castling is not allowed. You are allowed to move. You are allowed to move so that your king is attacked. You are allowed to move so your king is attacked. If, on your turn, you are unable to place a piece or move a piece, then the game ends in a draw. If you run out of cards, flip your discard over without shuffling it into a new draw deck. After placing or moving a piece, you then count. After placing or moving a piece, you then count the number of attacks on your opponent's king. If you have three simultaneous attacks, then you win. If both players have three simultaneous attacks, then the game ends in a draw. All right, there you go. That's how it's done, guys. That That's the process. That's the process. So now you know. Um, it's... Wrong mouse. Here we go. Uh, it's uh, definitely a... Different experience doing this live. Now would be a good time to insert ads. Do you guys want to see an ad? I don't know what it's saying. Insert ad. What does that do? Did that do anything? I don't think it did anything. Whatever. Um, so... Anyways, yeah. So this is my process, guys. This is a little bit behind the scenes. A little bit of the raw that you're going to see happening here. So, um, anyways, we will prep up the next game to film, get a little of the adrenaline out. What's everybody saying? Oh, an ad. Oh, you did get an ad. Huh? Interesting. Sorry. Okay. I mean, I'm not sorry. Maybe I am. I don't know. Hello. Card game and chess. Yes. This is a different version of chess. Um, probably gonna never saw an ad. That's okay. If you didn't see an ad. It's okay. It's not about the ads, guys. It's not about the ads. I just, it told me to click an ad and I just do what computers tell me to do. So I'm like a mindless drone. I just do what everybody tells me to do. So hello, uh, Zasper. Uh, hello, AI artificial intelligence. Oh, yes. I just told you I do what anything computers tell me to do. So that person or that computer would have a lot of power. So anyways. 
Uh, Argentina, that's awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, the diagonal lines, these are called zebras. Uh, they uh, are for exposure. So I'm recording everything separately. Not This isn't actually a, a screen capture. And so all the data that's around the edges won't actually be in the final video. So, all right, let's do four player chess. Let me get that ready. And it's not all going to be chess scripts, guys. It's I have some other ones, some other games that we we can record as well. We'll mix it up. Maybe I can run a poll. I don't know. Thanks for teaching me how to play garbage. You're welcome, Jack. J Jack. Okay. I, sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> don't have my glasses on. Um, okay. Let us record some more. Top chat. Can you guys like vote up chat? I am not going to be doing any gameplay uh, this time, although I am um, in the future planning on that, where I am. I'll take you through as I discover how to play a video game. We'll discover it together. Um, and as I learn the game, we can learn it together. So if you're interested in that. Magic the Gathering. Uh, I actually have that um, on my list to do. So um, I have to decide if I'm gonna do the card, like the physical card game or the digital one. I have the Steam the Steam game and I might, I'm might i gonna be checking it out. Make sure that's out of frame. Uh, just join. What are you doing in the stream? We are recording Jelly Bear. We are recording footage and I am showing you a little bit of the behind the scenes. So, okay, cool. Let's. Remember to put that up for you. Here we go. Jella, four player chess. Four player chess, how to play. The rules are the same as three player chess, except for these changes. For a refresher of those rules, check out this video. Set up the pieces in their matching color quadrant. There are two teams, the white and brown team and the blue and orange team. The player with the white pieces goes first, followed by orange, brown, then blue. The game ends once one player has been checkmated with the team that delivered the checkmate winning. Checkmate happens at the start of the player's turn who is threatening an opponent's king. You may not capture your teammate's pieces. Therefore, you, excuse me. You may not capture your teammate's pieces. Therefore, you do not threaten your teammate's king and your teammate may castle through a space you can move to. When traveling through the center rosette, the spaces directly opposite each other, as well as their adjacent rosette spaces, are not diagonally, are not diagonally or orthogonally connected through the center. This means that diagonal movement through this means that diagonal movement through the center may not continue to the opposite rosette, nor can the king, queen, or knight, when starting on a rosette, travel to any of these spaces. There are, here are the knight's available moves when starting on a rosette. Pawns always move, pawns always move away from their own base towards an opponent's base. They can capture diagonally through the rosette towards either opponent, but after doing so, but after doing so, they will only be able to advance towards that opponent it is impossible for a pawn to occupy a space inside their teammate's fourth of the board. A pawn's initial double step move and en passant are allowed like normal. The first, the first team to checkmate their, the first team to checkmate one opponent wins. Nailed it. I nailed it guys. I did it. We're so, we're so pleased with that performance. Not really, it was all right. It was just a-okay. Um, he already did. Yeah, this, this, that version of chess, uh, it's four players, but instead of the, uh, it's more like three player where they, all the, all the sides are connected. And so it's just a little bit, it's a little bit different. You guys want to do something that's not chess? How about Twister? 
No, no, no. We're not going to do Twister. Let's do... Oh, man. This one's long. Okay, we'll do it. Anybody played Throw Throw Burrito? Sorry, I'm just prepping the script in the teleprompter. This might be a mistake. This might be a mistake to try to do live. But that's okay. Because sometimes we make mistakes. And it doesn't really matter. Because you can just edit them out. So. You played uh, at a hotel. Nice. Nice. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's any questions. Anybody? Atomic Chess. Atomic Chess is... Knights, I think, are overpowered in that game. Here. Let me get rid of that. How does Twister work? Twister works... Um, so the reason why I haven't made Twister is because the... Uh, I don't know how I'm going to film it. I don't have a big enough space nor enough people because it's such. it takes up such a large space and you have to like put your hands and the feet on the dots and everything and so it just takes a... I'm not, I just haven't figured out how to film it yet. So it's just not a high priority. But card game Dirac. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, hey, are you going to... Oh, what am I doing for 200k subs? Ah, I have something special that I've already started working on. Something special. Except I don't know... If it's done before then, I may just release it early. Um, but it is. What are those cards behind you from? They look like early. So it's okay. So these cards are pre-cut. They um, or they're before they get cut. So when cards get printed, they get printed into giant sheets, and then they get cut, and then turned into playing cards. And so those um, are just from a company in Nevada that sells playing cards. And so you can buy those as sheets and uh the uh and you know hang them up as decoration or whatever so they kind of add a little bit of background niceness so how long did it take to make strooped uh eight years or something <laughs> but that's only because we worked on it pretty heavily for like a year or two and then we just stopped um so probably realistically it probably took more like a year or two and if I was doing it full time, you could probably make a game. Well, so you have to have a lot of play testing. So you could design the game probably six months to a year would probably be a, a decent amount of time to design a game in. Um, get this, put this over here. There we go. Um, how does one play pay? Uh, how does one play 52 card pickup? You'll just have to watch my video on that if you don't know. I can direct you. Somebody send him the link. Actually, don't send him the link. Don't put links in this chat because I think it blocks it. So uh, just look. Just look on my channel. You will find it. Uh, let's see here. Splendor. So um, do I own Splendor? Uh, I don't think I own Splendor, but it has been on my mind. But just so you guys know, I have like 190 games that are waiting to be filmed um, that are all just like in the queue and I have them all prioritized. And then I keep getting new games that keep that are of higher priority. So um, I release a video every other day. And so that's like 170 videos a year or something. So yeah, I own games that won't be released this year. So yeah, so there you go. Um, ba, 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 ba. although Splendor would not be at the bottom of that list. What's Stroop? Stroop's my game that I made. I did a Kickstarter for it. You should check it out. Uh, although, uh, because it's print on demand now, it's very expensive. Uh, so sorry about that. Do you play any of them? Do you play any games that not make videos about them? Yes, sort of, uh, kind of. So because I make games and I'm all about games like all day long, I don't play a lot of games. I get kind of exhausted from constantly learning and playing new games and stuff. And so I don't actually play a ton of games. The most, I play a lot of kids games with my kids. 
um, which is why there are going to be a lot of kids games <laughs> coming up here in the next several months. I'm, I'll try to release just like one a week so I don't overwhelm you with them. But how are, how am I? I am well, I am well. A little nervous because doing this live in front of people, even though there's only 70, 70, 73, that's not bad. Uh, please don't say my name, it'll embarrass me. You got it, Pam. Didn't say your name. Where are you from? Salt Lake City, Utah, USA. Somewhere on earth, yes. Google it, pretty cool game, various direct. Okay, I'll look into it. If I remember after all this. Um, my name? My name's Jim. What chess variance would you say is your absolute favorite? Um, I guess it depends on the context of what I want to be playing. I really like the idea of sovereign chess, which you can play with up to four people and has all the different colored armies. I think that's really cool. Um, I really liked Chess Evolved Online, which I just released like what two days ago, yesterday, something like that. Um, that game's pretty fun. Um, I have some other, some other really cool little video game chess variant or like thematically they're based off chess, um, in some ways that are, that are pretty fun that I'm going to be covering. Um, although I got to tell you guys, FPS chess is horrible. It's, I'm so bad at it. Uh, yeah, that one's not going to be, well, I'm going to still make a video on it, but I'm not a big fan of it. Jail. Did you say Jail. Did I, I misread something? Yeah. Bahami Taxi, I am not going to do. Anytime soon. Sorry. Uh, hobbies outside of YouTube and board games. What are my hobbies? Uh, I don't really have any hobbies. Oh, writing. <laughs> but I haven't written in a long time. Story Storytelling. So I'm writing a book, and um, it is... Uh, the first draft is, I don't know, halfway done. It's got like 75,000 words. So, I mean, it's bloated. It has to be edited and cut down and everything and turned, uh, turned into something manageable. But hopefully one day it is, I will be my goal once I can get, hopefully I probably get some employees and start getting the YouTube channel to run on its own. And then I have more time for other things. And I also like inventing things to solve problems. Um, so I want to start other companies to solve um, problems. So that are in the world. Do you... Am I going to do any collabs? Um, I don't have anything lined up at the moment. Overexposure. No, my zebras are set to 70, so it's actually perfect exposure. Unless I lean into them, then it overexposes. So right when you hit a little bit of zebras when it's good, um, good exposure. So, spammers, push me out. Okay. Okay, let's film. Throw, throw a burrito. Throw, throw a burrito. Throw, throw a burrito. How to play. The object of the game is to win two rounds by collecting the most points. You earn points by collecting a three... You earn points by collecting a three of a kind? You earn points by collecting three of a... Okay. The object of the game is to win... The object of the game is to win two rounds by collecting the most points. You earn points by collecting a three of a kind. Shuffle the deck and deal up... Shuffle the deck and deal about 15 cards to each player. It doesn't need to be exact. Each player puts their cards in a personal draw pile to their right. Split the remaining cards into two even-ish piles and place them face down in the middle of the table to form the community piles. Place the burritos and burrito bruises. Place the burritos and burrito bruises in the middle of the table. Each player should be able each player should be able to reach at least one burrito and one community pile. 
Each player draws the top five cards from their personal pile to form their hand. Each play players look at their hand, but keep them hidden from others. When everyone is ready, one player says three, two, one, burrito to, to begin play. When everyone is ready, when everyone is ready, one player says three, two, one, burrito to begin play. There are no turns. All play happens simultaneously. Players race to collect three matching cards by discarding exactly one card face down to a personal. Players race to collect players race to collect three matching cards by discarding exactly one card face down to the personal pile to the player to the Okay. Players race to collect three matching cards by discarding exactly one card face down to the personal pile to the player to their left, then they draw one card from their own personal pile, then repeat. You may not discard more than one card at a time. Your personal draw pile may be messy, so it is okay to draw any card from it. Nope, hang on, what am I saying? I'm not even following the script. Your personal draw pile may get messy, it's okay to draw any card from it. Your personal draw pile, your personal draw pile may get messy. It is okay to draw any card from it. Once you have a set of three matching cards, place them fa- Once you have a set of three matching- Once you have a set of three matching cards, place them down face- Uh, okay. Once you have a set of three matching cards, place them down face up in front of you in a single score pile in a single score pile. Then draw three cards from your personal draw deck. You may never have more than you may never have more than five cards in your hand at a time, so you must discard a card before you can draw new ones. So you must discard a card before you can draw a new one. If you run out of cards in your personal draw pile, then you may draw from either community pile, but once you get cards in your personal draw pile again, you must draw from that pile. Each set of three matching cards in your score pile is worth one point each. A set of three matching burrito cards is worth two points each, and they also start a battle. Burrito cards must match identically, even if their name is the same. After playing a set of matching burritos, yell out the type of battle you are starting, either a brawl, war, or duel, and all play pauses. When, when you score a brawl, when you score a brawl, when you score a brawl, the player to your right and left battle each other by racing. When you score a brawl, the player to your right and left battle each other, racing to grab a burrito and throw it at the other. The player to your right and left battle each. Each. So here's the problem, guys. Here. So because there's there's typos in the script. Typos obviously. Um, so I have to fix it and then not read it the incorrect way as I'm doing it. And so I just have to figure out how, how to make it sound better. When you score a brawl, the player to your right and left battle each other battle by each. No, it's not. I'm just, okay. Okay. Guys, ignore what I just said. When you score a... <sighs> When you score a brawl, the player to your right and left battle by each racing to grab a burrito and throw it at the other. The first player to get hit loses the battle. A war A war makes it so every player other than you is in a battle. The first The first player in the battle to get hit by a burrito The first player in the battle to get hit by a burrito loses the battle. In a duel, you pick any two players. You can pick yourself if you want. And each player grabs a burrito. Let's, there's a comma there. In a duel, you pick any two players. You can pick yourself if you want. And each player grabs a burrito and they stand back to back. The players count to, the players count down three, two, one, burrito. And on each number, and on each number, take a step away from each other. Then on burrito, they turn and throw. The first player to get hit by a burrito loses the battle. The first player to get hit by a burrito loses the battle. You may not flick or hit a burrito off the table. It must be thrown. The first object the burrito contacts must be a person in the battle in order to count it as a hit. 
You may not block a throw with a burrito. No, no, that's not true. You may block. You may block a throw with a burrito, another object, or another player, and you can run, hide, or delay before throwing. If you catch a thrown burrito, then the if you catch a thrown burrito, then the player who threw it loses the battle. You can fumble a catch, and so long as the burrito doesn't touch anything else, if you regain control, it counts as a catch. You can only hold one burrito at a time, but you 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 can only hold one burrito at a time, but you can catch a burrito while holding Ugh. Hang, sorry. <laughs> You can only hold one burrito at a time, but you can catch a burrito while holding one. You cannot block a player from packing picking. You cannot block a player from picking up a burrito. If two if two or more battles of any kind occur simultaneously, then all players immediately start a war at the table and the first player to get hit loses and the war ends. Loses and the war ends. If two players are hit at the same time, then the tied players resolve the tie with a duel. If you break any of these rules, then you lose the battle. If you don't have the correct set of three cards for the declared battle, or if you mistakenly grab a burrito for a battle and you are not, uh... If you don't have the correct set of three cards for the declared... If you do not have... If you do not have the correct set of three cards for the declared battle, or if you mistakenly grab a burrito for a battle you are not a part of, then you lose the battle and the battle cards. And the battle ends. <laughs> then you lose the battle and the battle ends. If you, lose, if you lose a battle, you take one burrito bruise token and add it to your score pile. Burrito bruises are worth minus one point. Only one burrito bruise token is given out per battle. Only one burrito bruise token is given out per battle. After a battle, return the burritos to the table and resume playing. The round ends when the last burrito bruise is given to a player. Each player calculates their score and the player with the most points wins. Each each player calculates their score and the player with the most points wins the round and takes the fear me badge. Rest Reset the game and play another round. If the player with the fear me if the player with the fear me badge wins the second round, then they win the game. If someone else wins the second round, then the player that then the player and the winner of the first round must duel to determine the winner. If the player with the fear me badge wins the second round, then they win the game. If someone else wins the second round, then the player and the winner of the Reset the game and play another round. If the player with the Fear Me badge wins the second round, then they win the game. If someone else wins the second round, then that player and the winner of the first round must duel to determine the winner. If there is a tie for points between two players at the end of a round, then those players must duel to determine the winner for the round. If the tie is between three or more players, then reshuffle the entire deck and have one player flip over cards until a war card appears then all the tied players engage in a war. The first player to hit, the first player hit is eliminated. Repeat this process until only one player remains. Repeat this process until only one player remains. The worst is when I look over and I haven't been recording the whole time and then I have to go and redo the whole thing again. That is, that is the worst. So... <laughs> okay, what did I miss? What did I miss in the chat? What words mean anymore? <laughs> what happened to doctors one through eight? I don't know what that means. Uh, Asian parents will love this game. Uh, just looking for a question to answer. What's that pixels on your face? Oh, the zebras. 
These are called zebras. They show exposure. And so my zebras are set to 70%. And so um, when I have just a little bit of zebras, then I know it's, um, it's good exposure. Uh, <laughs> for frustrating it is. Um, I didn't know that there were so many cuts on his videos. I thought they were all in one go. How? <laughs> yep. No. Thank you. That that's good because uh, that shows that you know I edit it well together, and so you didn't know. But yeah, no. This is this is typical. I'll go back and I'll hit things, and as I'm filming it, I uh, I'm thinking of the visuals that'll happen, and so if I'm gonna be on screen, I have to make sure I I it's like a nice take and I'm not like, cutting it a bunch. But if I know I'm not gonna be on screen, then I can cut it a little bit more and I have to try to match tone as I'm hitting different points if I have to make an edit in there so that way it, it'll work and it'll sound natural and fluid. And sometimes I have to go back and re-record things because I miss stuff or it just isn't working. So, but let's, uh, we can get rid of that. Um, but -dum -bum -bum. So we did throw through a burrito. You guys wanna do Monopoly? Should we do a Monopoly? This is another long one that I've been putting off. I'm putting off. It's funny. Okay. Thanks, guys. You can totally feel free to leave. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. In fact, the fewer people that oh yes, perfect. We dropped it. We dropped it. We cut our uh, viewers by half. This is perfect. Leave. Leave now. Leave now. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, should I do another ad? Oh, oh. And maybe more people will leave. <laughs> What happened to the guy from the Spanish version of the channel? Oh, uh, Eddie, he is, um, he's, uh, he's now doing the translations for the dubbing. Um, so it's a, uh, I'm, I'm in a new program by that Google has that allows you to like automatically dub things. And so I'm just trying it out to see if it's better. Cause it can, it's a lot faster than having to film him and re-edit everything. It's, it's a lot more work because I know enough. Well, I guess I, I recognize enough Spanish and Portuguese that I can, uh, we're back up to 77 viewers. We had more viewers after the advertisement. What happened? Maybe I should do another advertisement. That way we get even more viewers. <laughs> Anyways, um, and so yeah, if you guys don't know and you speak Spanish or Portuguese, check out those channels. But if you speak English, probably just stay on the normal channel um, if you're fluent in English, because it'll be higher quality. Um, just because the, the vocal inflection will be better. But anyways, um, I want to be able to reach just more people and help more people learn games. And so ultimately, I'm not at a position where I can just hire voiceover actors um, to, for the dubbing. Um, and it just takes way too much time to film and re-edit everything. However, with that being said, if these channels end up doing really well, then I can justify that cost and then I can go back and have people on screen and improve the quality and everything. So that is what happened to Eddie. So what is this? I didn't know there were so many cuts. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta scroll down, go back to what's, how much do you get paid from YouTube? Not, a mu not enough. So actually on January, my pay from YouTube got cut by 45% when compared to January of last year. Um, fortunately, my views are up, but uh, I'm a little nervous that I might have to uh, stop doing this full time uh, sometime this year. So um, I cannot see ads. That's okay. It's okay if you can't see ads, guys. It's not about the ads. Can you make a video about all of the chess evolved pieces? No, I'm not gonna do that. It would just take way too much time. And it wouldn't be worth it because people wouldn't want to watch it. Maybe, I mean, some people would, but I mean, maybe. You never know. Who knows? I'll look into it. Um, how much money do you spend on board games? Um, two years ago, I spent over $2,000 on board games, but now I've started to develop relationships with publishers, and so they will send me games for free. So I'm trying not to spend nearly as much as I did. Um, but I've spent quite a bit of money on board games. Chess finally got an update. <laughs> Start a Patreon. I have a Patreon. Nobody's, nobody's, nobody's doing it. Actually, I don't think it's active. Um, and so here's the thing, guys. I thought about, I thought about a Patreon, and I thought about uh, a uh, memberships for YouTube. Oh, should I do a poll? How do I do a poll? 
whatever. I'll do a poll on the channel later. Um, but the problem is, is with those things, you have to like provide extra content that goes above and beyond. And I just don't have the time. I have too many things that I'm trying to do um, to stabilize uh, my income so I can keep doing this full time. Um, that, although, I mean, just, cause, well, because basically if you have one patron that's supporting you with five bucks a month, you still have to spend the same amount of effort making whatever you're promising them if it was a hundred people at five five dollars a month so like maybe maybe there's like a min i don't know if there's a setting that you can have minimum thresholds where once you reach a certain amount then you then like people start paying i don't know like a kickstarter type thing that would be interesting patreon add that feature so is this your full-time job yes it is uh where do you learn to play i read the rules <laughs> which some rules are written much better than others and so it can be a pain uh to try to understand really poorly written rules um and if like so uh star trek tridimensional chess the it, it's that game was based off of the tv show that they just had it there weren't actually like official rules to it but they tried to like create a playable game and the rules are so uh, they're lacking so much. I had to really just, it took me forever to figure out what made sense um, with like the spirit of the game and stuff. And then five dimensional chess, there's no written rules on that. Um, I had to figure everything. Most Steam games don't actually have like written rules. Well, not most. I mean, a few of them do for sure. Maybe, maybe like in my experience, like 20% of them have written rules that are like, make sense that I can actually like um, reference and, and go with. But uh, if you are a Steam indie developer, what was I going to say? And if, and, well, like have written rules somewhere. And then if somebody like me asks for them, give them to me um, so I can make your video better. So what are those cards behind me? Those are uncut sheets. Actually, just rewind the video. It's it's in the beginning. <laughs> I already talked about it. What board, how many board games do I have? Uh, I have, oh, I have about 190, I think it's 193 that are waiting to be filmed. And then another, I don't know, a couple hundred that are, have already been filmed. I mean, my video, my channel has over 700 videos. So, um, 5d, wait, where'd that trauma go? 5d chess has a help menu, doesn't it? Not that I could find at the time when I made it It maybe it does now, but, um, I had to, I had to, I, I just had to keep exp It took me like what, like 12 hours or something to fully grasp and understand the concepts of that game because I had to figure out, can you en passant across timelines? And I couldn't find any documentation about that. Although they did have a discord and I, so I was able to ask questions, um, but I didn't start doing that until, I think until after most of the video had been made and that's when I discovered that. And so there are some discords like uh, Chess Evolved online, um, the people in the discord. And then I was able to talk to the developer and he was able to answer questions and they were able to help me. So it was really helpful. Um, the Ouroboros King? Yes, I'm doing that one. I actually, should we, should we record that one next? <gasps> should we do that one next, guys? Is that what you want? Is that what you want me to do? Okay, get rid of Monopoly. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, we're doing Monopoly. We're doing Monopoly. I don't think I, oh, uh, hang on, where is it? Okay, we'll do Ouroboros King next. If I remember, you'll have to remind me. I don't have a total count of my, my favorite board game is star realms. I've already said this guys, you got to watch my history of, of triple S no, it's okay guys. It's okay. I don't expect you to be full experts of me. How to play paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. No, listen, I already did how to play rock, paper, scissors, and it wasn't an April fool's joke, but I do have an April fool's joke coming. All 92 of you will know that. So don't be fooled by it. Actually, I think it's just kind of a fun thing. You'll see what it, it should be. It should be decent. Um, the game, trickiest check game, the game of Nem, Nemeroth. Okay, I'll look into that, I guess. Oregon Trail Hunt. Will you be doing more computer vid game videos? Yes. Although there, I have about, maybe like eight more that I'm have recorded and I'm, I need to edit still. Um, stop ignoring me. Gaby Jackson, Jason J Jansen wants you guys to stop ignoring her, him. I don't know. 
Baby? Gaby? I don't know. Uh, all the chess pieces. What is my favorite chess piece? The pawn? Because it's the only one that can do en passant? Obviously, guys. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't mean to give you attitude. Um... What is it? Uh, are you good at normal chess? Okay, so, okay. Let me tell you guys. This is this is a secret. Okay, this is a secret. So I've been playing chess. And not, so I, okay, back up, back up. So I was doing my live stream playing chess videos. Uh, or my let's play chess. And I was horrible. My ELO was like 300 to 400. And so I have been playing chess and um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not doing an opening that anybody knows because I've made up my own opening and I'm perfecting it. So it's called the Triple S Gambit. And it's not there yet. It brought me from, you know, 400 to 800. That's where I'm at now. I'm at eight, my ELO is about 800. Um, and the, the, the Gambit is designed to make people think you're an idiot and that you don't know what you're doing. And so it lures them into a false sense of confidence. And then you can checkmate them. Um, so if you look at my, uh, is it my how to play chess video? I think I show that as a checkmate move when you have, a, um, you have a queen and a bishop simultaneously check the king. And so they can't, um, step in front of it. Um, and then it also allows you, if you, depending on how you play it, um, it forces the king to move so they can't castle. So it's got a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of fun, but it really plays into the kingside castle. And so you're doing a whole pawn push towards the kingside castle. And then they just castle right into it. And then you just bring your king. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, eventually, once I, get, once I get better, I do want to do some more Let's Play with that. But the biggest problem of why I don't do more of these live streams is because of the environment. My studio is in my basement of my house. And my kids um, and my family's all upstairs making lots of noise. And so um, only when... Um, I have a moment of quietness. Can I record and film and stuff? And so that is why this stream is happening. In fact, we're about 46 minutes in. We're probably going to have to... Um, the heck? Can I... Don't just, send, don't just send the same stuff in the chat, guys. How do I... How do I ban you? Uh, put user in timeout. Boom. I put you in a timeout. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying now because I got distracted, guys. So anyways, um, let's just record this. Monopoly Revolution. Monopoly Revolution. How to play. The rules are the same as regular Monopoly except for these changes. For a refresher of those rules, check out this video. Lay out the board and put the game unit in its center. All money is digital and each player takes a bank card. Press, in press any button on the game unit to turn it on. Hold the C button, hold the C button to clear the balances. Hold the C button to clear the balances from the previous game. Whenever you need to add money to your account, put your card in the green side. Whenever, whenever you need to add money to your account, Put your card in the green side. Whenever you need to spend money, put your card in the red side. If you need if you need to pay another if you need to pay another player, then they put their card in the green side while yours is in the red. Always wait until the new balance is always always wait until the new balance shows on the cards before removing any card from the game unit. To view your balance, insert your card into either side, then remove it without pressing any buttons. When you land on Go, insert your card and press the Go arrow. Money increments in thousands and millions, indicated by the K or M respectively. When typing in money, you must include the proper increment after the numbers to When typing in money, you must include the proper increment after the numbers you enter to enter it. When typing in money, you must include the proper increment after the numbers to enter it. Press the C to press the C to delete a mistake and re-enter it. The game is divided into four zones: walking, cycle, car, and rocket. Go, free parking. 
go, free parking, jail, and go to jail are not included in these zones. When you land on a zone space, press the zone button. Pick pick to either pick to either ch pick to either ch I Pick to either choose any singles. Pick to either, either, either or either. What do you guys think? Pick to either choose any single zone and every player. What? Hang on. Pick to either choose any single zone and every player in that zone gets a chance. Okay. Pick to either choose any single zone and every player in that zone gets a chance or you may travel to the next unowned property and put it up for auction. To perform the chance option, wait to perform the chance option, wait until the game unit shows the zone icon you want to affect. To perform the chance icon, wait until the game unit shows the zone icon. Hang on. To perform the chance option, wait until the game unit shows the zone icon you want to affect, then press the zone button and every player in that zone must follow the change change message. And every player in that zone and every player in that zone must follow the chance message. If you pick the other option and every if you pick the other option and every property is owned, then you can force a deal and swap one of your properties that isn't in a complete set with any other player's property that also isn't in a complete set. To auction a property, press the deal button to start a time. To auction a property, press the deal button to start a timer. When the timer ends, the auction ends and the highest bidder wins. If the auction ends before the timer, then press the deal button again to stop it. Randomly throughout the game, the game unit may show a question mark and give out a chance. The chance the chance applies to the player who had the chance applies to the the chance applies to the player who had just taken their card out of the game unit. If the chance comes up, if the chance comes up when you're in the middle of a transaction, then follow the instructions immediately and of lose out? Hang on. If the chance comes up when you're, that's wrong, uh, when you are in the middle of a transaction, then follow the instructions immediately and lose out. Okay. If, if the chance comes up when you're in the middle of a transaction, then follow the instructions immediately and lose out. If the chance sends multiple players to an unowned property, then the property is auctioned. Auctions start at 10,000 and increase by any amount. There are four utilities on the board instead of two, and they function just like railroads. When repaying a mortgage, round up to the nearest 10,000. The price to get out of jail is 500,000, and it must be paid before you roll. If the game, if the game unit display if the game unit displays get out of jail on any player's turn, if the game unit displays get out of jail on any player's turn, then all players then all players in jail are immediately released. Oops. Awesome. Okay. We're getting rid of you. How do I how do I remove? Report hide user on channel. Boom. Let's see if that gets rid of that person. That's just type an F. Guys, if you're annoying in the chat, I'm gonna delete you. Delete you. <laughs> I'm gonna hide you from the channel. I don't know if they can still uh Hello used. I don't know if you guys can still see that or whatever, but whatever. Actually, I'm gonna report him too. Report, report, spam. Ooh, child abuse, pornography, or explicit material. Hmm. There we go. Um, but um, bum bum. Should I make a video on rock paper scissors, the card game? 
Oh, you should make a video. There's a rock put for scissors card game. Huh. Is it does it play with playing cards or is it a like a published game? I gotta say guys, I am not recording nearly as much content interacting with you than I normally would. But I kind of feel like you don't just really want me to just read through scripts um, and have these little breaks in between. Um, and that's probably a, uh, can you show us the triple S gambit? <laughs> um, can I? Um, do you guys want to see it? I'll do a poll. Uh, oh, first, a commercial break. Engage with your audience. Show your... How do I start a, start a poll? Do... do Oops, wrong keyboard. Do you want to see the TSG Gambit? Uh... Ask my community. Is that is that working? There it is. There it is, guys. There it is. Okay. If you want to see it, I can make it happen. Yes, 97%. Holy cow. I guess that's what happens when like one person says yes. So. 56 votes. That's pretty good. We're at, we're oh, we're down to 74 viewers. Okay, um, let's, okay, uh, it's pretty, it's like seeing a developer's room in a video game. Oh, interesting. I don't know what a developer's room is, but that's kind of cool. It sounds, I mean, I can imagine. If you're a streamer, you could have a VOD channel and a editing video channel. Oh, so I, I open up like a separate channel for streams and have one for, okay, I gotcha. Played hat games, left go, advertisement. Ha, no commercial break for YouTube. Red users like me. <laughs> nice. Uh, is that taco? Tacos? Teos? Sorry, I I don't know. I can't. For the, If you join late, I don't have my glasses on. Um, I don't think anybody that has voted has said no. So I guess we'll do it. End poll. Four percent said no. Obviously, it would have been a hundred percent. So clearly, um, clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to polls. Okay, um, okay, I'll show it to you. Oh, hang on. I'm still here. I'm still here, guys. Hang on. I'm just setting up the other set. Uh... Can you hear me? Hopefully you can still hear me over here. Okay. Let's uh, zoom out here. I'm going to show you the triple S gambit. This is that four player chess that I was showing. That's the board. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. Okay, guys, you want to see the triple S gambit? Here it is. Let me just make sure you... audio is coming through. Testing one, two. Okay, we're good. Okay, guys, so here's the triple S gambit. 
And it doesn't matter what color you um, play as, I can run it either way. So, um, without showing black side, well, okay, so the first move is pawn to e3, then they will usually go up two, then you do bishop, then they'll say, well, I'm gonna take the center. So they'll come up two. And it doesn't matter which way they go. If they go one, that's fine too, because what you want is the diagonal on here. Um, and maybe they'll do a knight. Um, so then, here's the move, guys. Here's the brilliant move. Let me take off my slippers, because this floor is a little loud. Here's the brilliant move. You do king to f1. And that is what throws everybody off. And when I'm playing online, some, some, sometimes people just blast right through it, but sometimes I get like a 10 second pause because they're thinking like, what is he doing? Because nobody's ever seen this. There is not an opening. I mean, maybe there is, but there is not an opening that nobody knows. Like whatever their opening was has, is not counting for the king to be on F1. So their opening is completely hosed. So now they have no clue what to do. So they'll usually bring up like a knight or something, or, or I think they usually they get this knight up here. Um, so then your next move, is queen to e1. <laughs> and then usually they'll bring up their knight. And now I've, I have found that in the higher level play, they start bringing out bishops and stuff um, to do different openings and stuff. And so if they move out the dark square bishop, then this checkmate does not work. Um, but this is still my opening. Um, and so here is where you can choose to take the gambit. The gambit is either... Well, if you want to run the gambit, you do pawn to d4, okay? So the gambit is they take, you take, now they think, oh yeah, free piece. Nope, because you bring your bishop out and that's checkmate because you have a double attack and um, they can't do anything. And it just, it, I love it. When people, when, uh, when uh, sometimes you'll get funny responses, they'll be like, I can't believe I lost to that or whatever. And so, um, I, I didn't learn this from anybody. I figured this out myself. Maybe somebody else already has this. I mean, because chess is a very old game. Um, but my opening... So let's say that they don't... Uh, here we are. So let's say um, that if they don't take the gambit and they come down, that's good because you want to block this square for what you're going to do next. But... Um, or they'll just, they'll just not take it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take it because now you got two pawns lined up and just blocks the king. Um, and so usually I don't actually run the gambit because in higher levels, I don't, usually they bring out a bishop or something um, because if, anyways. So how my opening goes from here is... Hang on, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the comments just to make sure. Okay, it sounds like you guys can hear me. I mean, it looks like you can, I just, you never know. Um, so then, so typically what my move is going to be, I'll either bring up my my uh, h3 pawn or else I'll bring up my f, f4. Um, either way, so one, the, the uh, that pawn will help for this exchange because you don't want to exchange. You want to, so, so, okay, so let me back up. You want to get, well, what I want to do, what I want to do is get my, I want to free up um, a file, a, a, a rank, a row, whatever, a, a column. There it is. <laughs> By getting a pawn off of and creating an open column, preferably on the H. Um, but so you, so, so after this position, if you decide to not run with the gambit, the, the opening continues with what you're going to do is you're going to push pawns for the castle because typically they castle. I mean, if they castle the other side, it doesn't matter because you can run up and get a queen. And it doesn't work all the time, guys. I'm not the best player. But um, I'll show you this in action and show you what it looks like. So um, so typically, um, you can run... You, I'll run a pawn up here. And if they take, then I'll take. And then I'll bump up this pawn. And then your bishop's protecting this piece. Um, because your whole push is this way. And usually what they'll do is they'll be like, Oh, I know. I'm going to get my rook here. And I'm going to um, pin down the queen by moving my knight over here, and then the, the rook will come down and get him. But we know that, guys. That's all part of the plan. What the, or that's not where it goes. The, what you want them to castle. You want them to castle. Um, and so they'll come up or whatever. And so we push up a pawn here, and then they'll castle. And then we'll push up another pawn. And then they'll move him here. And then you'll go here, 
and then they'll go here and they're trying to get this exchange except well except for they got to get this dude out of the way so they'll i don't know they'll do something else but um but basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this uh this knight will then move um and it's, it's pretty fun he'll get into weird situations um that's on the wrong square and so if uh you know he'll move over there or whatever and so i like this move because if you change if you change if you exchange bishops then the whole point is to get this file open because now your queen can come out and then you can get check and checkmate like that um it doesn't always work but it's kind of fun to do i've been enjoying it so um let's back up here uh, so sometimes they don't they don't take that exchange um usually what they'll do is they'll try to hit this diagonal and so they'll try to get their pawn out here um and then you watch out if they bring up their knight over here you just bring up this knight and that protects this space because it's a fork between these two pieces so they come down and you can get them and protect them um until you have time to bump up your your pawn to to target them um or or depending on what what's happening on this side of the board if they've castled and you're you've been able to get a file open and they come this here they wherever it is and then they come up oh no, no there and then there okay and they come up here sometimes i will just abandon that piece come here they'll be like oh yes i get a free rook and it's like no you don't because you get checkmated so anyways that is that is the process of uh how this works but anyways so, um, let's go back to the desk. Okay. Oh, I got to turn off that set. So anyways, so that is the, um, the TSG Gambit, the Triple S Games Gambit. And uh, it's been fun to kind of learn and perfect. And um, yeah, but there's a lot of forks in there where they can get different things and different stuff. So um, it's not perfected. It's like, and it's definitely not foolproof by any means. Um, so see, th that is my opinion of chess is that because there's so much analysis you can't ever play somebody on an evil like playing field because if they have studied strategies tactics openings forks pins all these different things then like you can't compete with them if you haven't and so it's not like a true like you can't just like go up against anybody and just like put like your intellects together and fight because somebody if they just have more training like they're going to beat you every time even though you probably are of the same um, intellect level or something, you know, close enough. And so, um, which is why I just, I don't know, I just really like the idea of creating something new and just doing it my own way, um, learning something new. So anyways, what's my favorite opening? The Triple S Games Gambit. I just showed you guys that. That's the only one I play. <laughs> so um, I just... <laughs> I thought it would be, uh, is that info on your camera because it's so old or for it's, no, that info on my camera is because it's a professional film camera. <laughs> um, and so it, it, it's, it's only, it's not recorded. I don't record that, um, that stuff. So I also said, okay. Um, are you going to do a video on outdoor Oh, oh, no. Or, oh, 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 yes, yes. Hang on. I got to go get it. It's on my other computer. Uh, what should I do? Do I have music? Hang on, guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't have like a be right back screen set up, but I should be able to add... <laughs> There. Is that music? You should be hearing music now. Okay, I'll be right
Sorry. Oh, darn, nobody can hear me. Well, I wasn't really talking, so it's quite loud. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> what's my favorite board game? Star Realms. Do you have demo notifications? I don't know what that means. 3D Tetris exists? It does, I've looked into it. Um, but it's not a high priority to say. Ouroboros King. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Ouroboros King. What if in your chest openings, the opponents open specifically, oh yeah, if you specifically try to counter my gambit, it is very easy to counter if you know what you're doing. But um, but then there's just not enough people that know what to do. Well, okay, okay, let me, <laughs> there are like several openings and several things that if you're aggressive with a king in a very specific, or a queen in a very specific way, it just is disastrous. And so I just, I don't face it enough that I've figured out those, how to fix those or how to counter those. Um, but I'm gonna study your gambit now. <laughs> yeah, it needs a lot of work for sure. But it's, the idea is you're just, you're pushing your pawns up and protecting them um, is one of the kind of the ideas. Um, but I'll have to do it where I'm actually playing. I think that would be fun. That might be fun with you guys to, uh, for those who are interested playing, oh, I wasn't recording the stream. That's okay, whatever. Do you have, I don't know what that means. Normal life, no chess variations, <laughs> just Jim being Jim. Um, like a day in the life, is that what you're talking about? People having higher levels than yours can easily beat your gambit. And a lot of people are very confused. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... Th I think you're right, uh, po Poke Dolio. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, but that's like, yeah. Anybody who's better than you, whatever you're doing, they're going to beat you. So, until you get to that level. So. But, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, not try. My favorite shogi opening. I don't play shogi enough to have one. Why is the clock not moving? What clock? In the top right, this clock? Because I'm not recording. Is officially chess tuber. Uh, be right back screen. Set up choice of color for the screen. Okay, um, one or two more questions. Skyrim board game? Uh, I don't know. Haven't thought about it. Favorite opening is black? The Triple S Games Gambit. I do the same thing. <laughs> I just play one way. Um, oh, donation notifications. That's what you're talking about. Jer? Jer bread? Um, I do not know. I do not have that set up, obviously. Um, I'll have to look into that. Um, so yeah, I do have a, if you want to donate to me on PayPal in my channel, go to my channel, hit about, and then there's a link to it. I'm pretty sure there is. And then YouTube won't take any percentage of what you donate. Like if you donate through uh, super chat or super thanks or whatever, like YouTube takes like 30%. So I don't know. Are you planning to design chess too? No. Well, never say no. You never know. What's my favorite board game? You actually play Star Realms. Hmm. My favorite chess variant, I don't know. I like, they, they appeal to me in different ways for different reasons. 
how often will I upload how to house? Um, not very often, maybe once a month. Um, Eurovision, I don't know what that is. Do I follow Eurovision? I don't know. What's my favorite opening other than TSG? Um, Tennyson, maybe? Because it's super aggressive. But I don't know it well enough to do it. I don't really play anything else. What would I do if Mr. Beast was in my stream? I would say hello and ask him to get back to me when I reached out to him because I wanted to collab on a mystery escape mansion idea. I thought it would be cool. I could do the how to play for how to play it and then he would buy the mansion and whoever won the game got the mansion. I just, you know, it's it basically think mystery escape room, but an entire mansion. I thought it would be cool, but maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a little too much money for him, but yeah, but if he jumped in when I was YouTube, when I was streaming YouTube and I was doing my TSG gambit to give me a thousand dollars if I won the channel like uh, like he did with that one chick who was playing chess, uh, I would probably immediately lose uh, <laughs> and I wouldn't get it, which would be a bummer. But whatever. Will you collab with someone like Gotham? I reached out to Gotham. Uh, he didn't respond. Uh, I would, yeah. If if you are a, a YouTuber with a large audience and you want to collab, I'd be happy to. Uh, talk for sure send me an email and it, or if you know somebody you can ask them to collab with me and have them reach out or whatever or you could uh, I guess leave a comment and I will uh, I could look into it but I want to do more collabs for sure Dungeons and Dragons yeah I've thought about doing that it's a bit it's a bit complex though the plan Z, yes, I have read I have read your chat several times now. Uh, a day in the life. Maybe I'll do it. Um, maybe for 300,000 subscribers. Who inspired you to make YouTube videos? Um, I originally wanted to start a game company that made board games. And it uh, stemmed out of that. You can check out the history of the channel. Uh, I have a video that kind of talks about it. Okay, here we go. Ouroboros. Not great. I don't have a napkin. Okay. What? Oh, I do have a napkin. How about that? How about that? <laughs> More prepared than I could have ha possibly have imagined. Well, I'm already recording. Ah, gosh darn. Okay, here we go. The Ouroboros King, how to play. The rules are the same as regular chess, except for these changes. For a refresher of those rules, check out this video. Ugh, lost my breath. The Ouroboros King, how to play. The rules are the same as regular chess, except for these changes. For a refresher of those rules, check out this video. The object of the game is to beat the final level. Hovel, hover your mouse over anything to see its description. The first time you the first time you play, your army will consist of a king, a bishop, a rook, and a knight. Once you have discovered enough new pieces, then you then when starting a new then when starting a new run, you need to select your starting pieces. On the map screen, click on the on the map screen, click on the army icon to rearrange your unit's starting positions. Click on the click on the map node to begin battle. On a unit, click on a unit to select it and click on gosh, this is rough. Click on a click on a map node to begin battle. Click on a unit to select it and click on the and click on a highlighted space to move it. Hover over a unit to see how it moves. Hover over a player's sword. Hover over a no, is it click? No, I think it's hover. I think it's hover. 
hover over a player's sword icon to see all of that player's available moves. Hover over a player's sword icon to see all of that player's available moves. Let's hit it once more. Click on a player's sword icon to see all of that player's available moves. So I film it twice, that way I have it either way and I don't have to come back and re-record it. There is no check or checkmate. Capture your opponent's king to clear the level. In the bottom, there are relics that give you permanent abilities and items you can consume for a one-time use advantage. Rock obstacles on the map prevent movement. Rock obstacles Rock obstacles on the map prevent movement. Portals allow you to move between the two in the same relative direction. Bombs blow up every unit on every adjacent space. There is a gold reward for beating a level. The reward starts at 200 and decreases by 4 after each move. You can use gold to purchase items and upgrades. After winning a level, you then get rewarded based on after winning a level, you then get rewarded based on the type of node you were at. Training grounds allows you to recruit a new unit. If you already have the maximum of Training grounds allow you to recruit a new unit. If you already have the maximum of 8 units, you will receive 350 gold instead. Armory allows you to upgrade your existing units, but not all units can be upgraded. If you have no available units to upgrade, you will receive 350 gold instead. Ruins allow you to gain a relic. The shop allows you to purchase items. The sacrificial obelisk will force you to decide between sacrificing a piece or a relic to get one that is much more powerful. There is no draw by move repetition or turn limit. If kings are the only pieces left on the board, or the AI decides that it is losing, it will offer you a draw. If you accept it, the level will end, but if you accept it, the level will end and and but. And but if you accept it, the level will end and you will but you will not. And that's fine. If you accept it, the level will end and you will not gain any gold or reward. If it is a boss's battle, then the level is replayed. Boss battles do not give rewards. If your king is captured, then you lose. If your king is captured, then you lose and must start the run over from the beginning. You can decrease the difficulty of the AI in you can decrease the difficulty of the AI in the settings. After beating the game for the first time, you can increase the difficulty by adjusting the starting settings. After beating the game for the first time, you can increase the difficulty by adjusting the starting settings. There you go, Ouroboros. We're sitting at an hour and a half. I'm probably gonna have to end the stream here pretty soon. My family's gonna get home. 79 viewers? No, that's good. Guys, we are we are at about double the viewers than my, when I when I did my last live stream. So uh that was I don't remember when that was. That was a while ago, but anyways. Will you be doing a charity live event? Uh I do not have plans to do that at the time, at this moment. Um I mean it's if I was drawing in like tens of thousands of people in live events, then I think it would be definitely worth <gasps> commercial. It would definitely be worth uh, doing, you know, something like that. Commercial break. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I mean, sort of. Um, can't wait to see the full video. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Um... That video game script was pretty rough, huh? I mean, sort of in some ways. Um, and I'll have to go back. Like typically I'll hit something in the editing. And I'll realize when I'm getting the recording footage, I'm like, oh crap, that was wrong. And I'll have to go back and re-record something, uh, which it's not a big deal. It's better to just take actions and move towards getting something done than to just stall and try to make it perfect. And it just takes forever. Um, I hope you do more live streams. I plan on it, but it's just challenging with uh Audio. Audio is the main thing. But then I, I, so here's what I did think. If I had some music that was low enough, it might, that only you guys could hear, it might, it might um, mask all the thumping in the, the foot. Well, then I can't record here. I could do it at the other table though. So that would work. 
so I can definitely do, I, yeah. So I'm thinking about a couple of different live stream options. One, where, so I have all these games that I have to open and they have all these components that are in wrappers or they're, um, or they're, you have to punch them out and stuff. And I thought, well, that would be really easy to talk to you guys, answer your questions while I'm unwrapping that stuff. Um, so that would be an easy idea for a stream. Another one would be while I'm filming all the close up stuff. Um, I have, I already have the other, I mean, you saw, I just went over to the other set just a little bit ago and, um, you know, showed you the TSG gambit. And so I have the capabilities. It, everything's piped in. I got a new computer. Um, oh, my family's home. So the live stream is going to be ending here. So guys, let's just wrap this up really fast. Um, game unboxing steam could be very fun. Randomly st streaming. Yeah, it's going to be kind of random. It, there's a high chance it'll be on Thursdays. Um, that I'll be able to make Thursdays work. Um, I'm working on a, on a music solution so that way I can have background music that's 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 quiet. It's not gonna be as blasting like the other one was, um, but it'll just be there for you guys just to help make it a little bit better. But you have to have copyright um, permissions and stuff. And so I found a platform that can do that, but you gotta pay for it. And so I just gotta figure out if it's gonna be worth it or not. So um, I'm gonna do a few more of these probably without music um, until the, uh, until, um, I can figure out if it's actually worth paying whatever the subscription fee is for that. Um, thank you, TC2. Um, is this already ending? Yes, sorry, uh, it is already ending. Um, cool, um, okay, uh, we're gonna do, what is my live streaming routine gonna be? Uh, possibly, well, if I'm going to stream, it'll most likely be Thursdays at about this time. Um, but it, it's going to be really sporadic. I, I don't, once I can get, I want to move, get a bigger house, get more space, get more land, build a studio or convert a shop into a studio. And then I can insulate it and then I can record and then I can have a set schedule of recording. Um, and that would be, uh, kind of what I want, but anyways, um, you're welcome. Cool. Hey, guys, let's end this. Um, have a good day. We'll see you in the how to plays. Well, I mean, I rarely read comments. I'm sorry. Keep leaving them. It helps the YouTube YouTube algorithm. And sometimes I go through and, and do it. But I just, I figure getting more content out is, is good. But anyways, 